Well, hello there again. Um, welcome at the second day of the Global Azure, the first Global Azure uh, event. Uh, there have been a few sessions earlier today. Uh, so uh, let me know how, how you like uh, all of these uh, sessions and how you like this virtual format. Uh, I'm eager to know. Um, and today I, I'm also giving away a, a session. Uh, it's the same as yesterday. Uh, it's about doing, well, authentication using managed identities uh, to other services you've created. So if you've watched my session yesterday, uh, feel free to join today also. But it might be better to watch one of the other awesome sessions there are. So uh, that's just a heads up. Um, also, so I have a few new followers. Thank you for that. SLNZ, Hulichinism, Hu Ograde, Molion. So uh, thanks for the follows. Uh, appreciate it. And uh, well, let's let's get started uh, today. So, uh, 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 well, as I mentioned, uh, I, I want to talk a bit about uh, using managed identities um, and, uh, and using them to authenticate to your backend services. Um, for the people who don't know me uh, yet, uh, let me do a short introduction. I am Jan de Vries. I'm a cloud solution architect, uh, mostly Azure uh, stuff. Uh, I work at a small consulting company called 4.net. Uh, we have about 50 consultants, uh, all doing well .net development, obviously. Uh, most people uh, work uh, from on-premises to Azure solutions. We have a couple of uh, guys, uh, consultants, uh, who are also doing AWS, some with uh, Google Cloud. So, uh, well, we are very broad, doing .net framework, .net core, stuff like this. I mostly focus on creating solutions uh, in, the, in the Azure space. So uh, you can think about uh, migrating from on-premises to the Azure cloud or expanding the Azure uh, environment uh, the customer has, doing uh, quick scans, doing consultancy jobs uh, one day uh, uh, one day or a couple of months, uh, depends on the job. So that's, well, uh, that's what I do in my da daily life aside from speaking uh, at conferences or virtual events in 2020. If you have any questions, uh, please let me know. I have my chat open in, in one of my screens. So uh, uh, if you want to say something, just uh, give a shout out and, uh, in the chat and I will address it. So uh, let, let's get started. Um, because uh, we have a lot to cover and well we have infinite amounts of time but I want to close at like 12 o'clock my time so you can watch other sessions also. So Azure Active Directory and uh, Managed Identities uh, but, but first let's take a small step back uh, because uh, let's get back to the basis and well uh, how do you design your solutions, be it on-premises or in the cloud? Um, because that's important, uh, designing your solutions uh, properly. Uh, a lot of the times I look at the list of Azure and the new services or the fancy services which are added, uh, well, constantly or improved constantly. And I'm like, yeah, I want to try that service and that service and see if this fits in the customer project uh, because it's well sounds awesome um, and while it has its advantages uh, the new uh, a lot of new services uh, using those new services in azure um, it's not the most important part it's it's well kind of the least important part of creating your overall solution architecture uh, because what is important well these points uh, like like time to market maintainability security availability the knowledge of the team of the customer i'm a consultant uh, so i hop from customer to customer and uh, normally when i when i leave on a project the team 
from the customer has to maintain all of it. So it makes sense to choose uh, services and techniques uh, which the team is familiar, familiar with or is at least able to maintain it. So you can't make, well, super fancy uh, state-of-the-art uh, solution architectures if the team isn't ready for it. So you have to do this, well, gradually. Uh, same for time to market. If you make a super huge solution architecture with which is super fancy, it might not be ready at the end of the week. So, and if the customer needs the solution at the end of the week, uh, maybe you have to think of about something else. So also the cost. The cost is something which, well, all of my all of my customers are uh, Egron. They're they're telling me, Jan, uh, we want to move to the cloud, uh, but I want to know what it costs up front, because we have this data center right now. It costs thousands of dollars uh, per per month or per year, uh, and I want to know what the, what I have to pay in the cloud. Is it more or less or the same? Uh, so that's important uh, to to factor in because cost, there are awesome services in, in Azure or also in the other cloud providers, but some are rather expensive or at least cost a lot of money. I don't know if they're expensive, they just cost a lot of money, which is diff different. Best thing about doing virtual conferences and virtual sessions, you can have coffee and water uh, during the talk. So today I, I want to do a bit of uh, 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 stuff about uh, security because security is one of the most important uh, factors when designing your uh, solution uh, and a lot of people do it afterwards or are like yeah hmm, it's not something we like doing so we'll put it somewhere on the backlog and do it in 2050 or something. So uh, it is important and you have to take this into consideration from the start of your project. So obviously the time to market and the cost and the maintainability is important, but security is something you need to think about upfront also. These days we see a lot of news articles about hacks, about leaked databases, leaked uh, user credentials, stuff like this. And it's all about, well, most of the time it's because the security the, of, of the, the solution wasn't properly, uh, wasn't proper. I see one of my LED lights is, is failing on me. Let me put it back on. Whoa. Cool. So uh, there's that. Also, one other. Sorry for this. This usually normally normally doesn't happen. So better. So uh, the security. Um, uh, so what what to do when think about security? Well. Um, Let's, let's, I'll show you a nice diagram uh, on uh, what I see uh, happen quite often uh, at customers because someone has read something about uh, doing microservices and they, they, or at least a lot of customers come up with this kind of a design when they think about microservices. Uh, they have a couple of app services, which are their microservices. Uh, of course, some queuing, some databases, some storage uh, is also in place. And because all of these services need to share data with each other, they have connected them via HTTP, via HTTP requests uh, with each other. So, needless to say, I'm not very happy with these kinds of designs, but it's what I see being designed and implemented quite often. 
it makes me uh, it's, it makes my consultant life a lot easier because there are a lot of improvements you can make in such a design. It's just not something you should be wanting. Still, a lot of customers are doing this, so let's let's work with this and let's make this secure. Because when I get to a customer with such a design, the first one of the first things I, I uh, ask them is, you know. Azure or any cloud provider is a public cloud, right? So anyone who knows the host names or the IP addresses of your services will be able to connect to them and well retrieve or uh, manipulate data if your security in the application isn't well proper either. So most of the time, not all, always, but most of the time I'm lucky enough and, and they, they say, yeah, we've thought about this, uh, securing our services. So we've done some IP whitelisting, so only if, well, valid IPs can connect to it. Uh, so, some have uh, created a, a solution so, uh, with some secret code inside the HTTP header or the body. Uh, which is not something you should do, but hey, it happens. Uh, using self-signed or, or not self-signed certificates, which is a great way of securing your services. Um, if there is some operations uh, people in, in the company at the customer, uh, lots of the times they have some uh, virtual networks uh, implemented. Uh, they have. It, well, integrate some virtual networks with uh, NSGs, network security groups, uh, and, and some rules uh, on it. So only services, valid, well, whitelisted services or traffic can uh, can access uh, the VNet, uh, the service in the VNet, which is awesome. So this is a great way of securing your infrastructure, and also using private link. Private link is awesome. There's a lot of focus on it. Uh, uh, I think App Services and Cosmos DB just got a private link in GA or Preview or both of them. I, I, I don't keep, keep track of it. Last year, a lot of services also got private link support. And you can think about private link of being uh, a, a VPN to your VNets. You can use it for your uh, on-premise, connecting your on-premises to your uh, cloud environment or the other way around if you want and having a private link in between, uh, which is awesome. This session isn't about private links or VNets uh, because that's more like an infrastructure thing and I'm more like a dev, so I'm not an expert on this. I'm expert enough to be dangerous when configuring this. so. That's something you should know. Still, using certificates is a good idea to protect your services. It's kind of the same as using uh, your managed identity or from a security perspective, uh, or at least in my opinion, it is. Uh, but the uh, the top the top two aren't very well clean solutions to secure your services. IP whitelisting is hard. You can whitelist the Azure IPs, the internal IPs, or maybe external IPs. But being in a well pass solution when using app services, you don't really know for sure what the IP address of your app service is. Sure, you can do some public IP, buying some public IP and stuff like this, but it's it's well a dirty solution in my opinion. A secret code and headers. Obviously, don't do this. So, my session today is about using uh, managed identities. Uh, managed identities is something uh, which has been in Azure for a well, while, quite long. Uh, I think about three years now, something like it, maybe even four. Uh, and what they are, what managed identities are, they are well. Identities which are managed by Azure, it's it's in the name. Uh, but what it does is uh, when you turn this on, when you when you say to an app service, 
I want you to have a managed identity. It will create an identity, a service principle, in the Azure Active Directory. And this identity is, well, coupled with your app service. This way your app service is also a, well, let's say a user inside your uh, tenant. Uh, and this user, uh, well, you can uh, grant roles or, or access permissions to, uh, to these identities. A lot of people use it to connect to, well, Key Vault or Service Bus or any of the other support services in Azure. Uh, and it's, well, the recommended way to connect those services. Because previously you had to do work with connection strings and SAS tokens and stuff like this. And it's, a, well, there's a lot of stuff and secrets you have to maintain in your configuration and with managed identities you don't have to. It's just your app has an identity and this identity has or has not access to other services. So there's also a, a, a nice diagram on the documentation site on managed identities. Uh, it's a scope for virtual machines but it's about the same for app services. So you have an identity and this identity uh, well uh, re requests a token from uh, from uh, Active Directory for a specific service and sends the token to a service which can authorize it and do some authentication on it if you want so you can forget about this whole diagram it's in the documentation and it's well, pretty much the same as a regular OAuth flow. So forget about this slide. So what I want to do today in today's session is create this. So as I shown you in the earlier diagram, uh, what I see uh, imp getting implemented quite often is having some front-end service, some backend for front-end perhaps, and it connects to one or multiple backend services which are doing stuff and i want to use the in this backend for frontend i want to add a managed identity to this uh, api this frontend api and use this identity and an x token for this identity to connect to the backend services so for this demo or for today i've only implemented one uh, backend API, but I, you can do this for multiple if you want, if you need. So first, we have to create a managed identity. So if you're not familiar with, with this yet, uh, it's rather easy uh, to do. Uh, you can, uh, well, you can add them via uh, your ARM template and add a, a nice uh, identity. Uh, property to it and with the type system assigned which will make sure your uh, uh, your app service will get a uh, managed identity this also works for uh, other uh, supported services like like well logic apps uh, virtual machines uh, well stuff which uh, should have or which it makes where it makes sense to have a managed identity if you don't like ARM templates or using, or you just want to create a demo or, or just are a visual person, you can also use the, the, the Azure portal for this. Go to the identity blade and set the status to on and an object ID will be created. And this, this object ID is the identifier of your, well, service principle in, uh, in uh, Azure Active Directory. I don't recommend doing this in the visual way in the portal uh, because nowadays we want to deploy our infrastructure and resources via code, but it's possible, of, of course. Once this has been created, uh, once you have turned this on, an enterprise application will be available in the portal with the same name as your uh, uh, as your app service. So in my solution, I have this Janfei Secure API dash API. 
which has been created in the enterprise applications blade uh, in my Active Directory. So I can show you this. So let me show you. Um, this is the app registration. Let's go to the enterprise application Active Directory Enterprise. Whoa, it's beyond fairy. Would be great if I had prepared this if I was already in this. Uh, in, in this so there it is uh, this is my managed identity for uh, for my app service which uh, which is uh, living over here so I have this Jan Fe secure API and I've turned on the managed identity for this uh, for this API so let me zoom out a bit and there it is the identity with the object ID and this is the same object ID as you can see over here. So it's the same. That's that's approved. So next up, now we're. If you hear something, it's my daughter crying downstairs. So uh, it's being handled. So what we now that we have a managed identity. Um, we have uh, the the option to create an access token uh, for this managed identity using uh, well using the default Azure Service Token Provider and say stating get an access token with the application ID URI which I'll get back to later on and specify a tenant if you want it's an optional argument I specify them most of the time because I'm in dozens of tenants and I want to be explicit about it in which tenant it has to search otherwise well uh, Visual Studio for doing local development Visual Studio will have trouble uh, deciding which tenant it has to look for and this is specifying the tenant ID has helped me more times uh, and it, it saves a lot of bugs while doing development or at least for me so it's optional, so in your app service, and if you're connecting to service inside the same tenant, it's not necessary per se, just a good practice in my opinion. So if you're familiar with uh, the get uh, the service uh, Azure Service Token Provider and the GetX token async, you probably notice I'm using this application ID URI over here, and normally you specify something like microsoft.storage.accounts.org or microsoft.servicebus.namespace and stuff like this. So, uh, well, a kind of a constant string uh, in order to get an X token for the specific service bus namespace or other support services. There's also a key fault uh, helper method over here, which helps you, well, retrieving uh, an X, uh, getting an X token for key fault. Uh, but now, I want to connect to uh, well my own services, which isn't a, a default Azure resource, uh, so I have to specify which service I want to connect to. And I'll show you in a minute how to create or where to create this application ID. So because the next thing we need to do is create an app registration. And this app registration is important because this app registration will be connected to our backend uh, service, backend API. I'll, I'll show you uh, this in the, in, the, in the browser. So I have this uh, app registration. Just like yesterday, the printer is turning on and prints stuff. Cool, right? It's, it's like magic so um, this is the, the, the app registration um, uh, for the secure API speakers I've named it like the API I have in the backend uh, you're free to name it whatever you want 
if you have multiple environments like dev, test, acceptance, production, maybe you want to post fix it with something or prefix it. It's, it depends. It's a naming thing and naming is hard. So once this is created, uh, and you can create this via next next finish in the uh, when creating an app registration, uh, you have to specify some uh, web callback uh, uh, URL, uh, which you can leave blank or fill out fill some bogus value in it because we won't be using it for for this at least. So once this app registration is uh, done, you have to navigate to the expose an API blade. And this is where you can create the application ID URI. So it has to be a unique, well, URI for your application. And this is the value which we'll be using to retrieve an access token for uh, this service later on. Later on, I'll also show you the code uh, in, in my solution for this. Uh, so this is all there is to it. Uh, create the application ID URI. You probably notice I've also created a scope and added an authorized client application over here. Uh, this is necessary for me at least because I like to develop and test locally. When I'm developing solutions, I use Visual Studio and do like F10, 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 F10 or do some other debugging. And when I'm developing locally, I also want to connect to my backend services in order to fetch data. I don't want to work with mocks or stops or whatever. But in order to do so, I have to create an access token from within Visual Studio using, well, my identity. And for this, you need to add the client ID of Visual Studio to your authorized client applications. Uh, this has taken me quite long to figure out, but apparently there's a GitHub issue on the Azure.NET SDK uh, repository. The link is in uh, my slide deck, which I'll share later on. Um, so if you want to connect via Visual Studio to your, well, app, to your uh, API, living inside the app service, you have to add Visual Studio to the client applications. And in order to do so, you also have to create a scope because this client ID will be granted a scope. So I've created a bogus scope, which doesn't do anything, just being there in order to have Visual Studio connect to it. If you're an Azure CLI uh, person, you can also use the, the CLI, uh, but uh, you have to specify a different uh, identifier. So in the linked GitHub uh, uh, issue, the, the, both the client ID of Visual Studio and Azure CLI are, uh, are specified, so you can copy paste it and use it over here. Next thing you need to do, so this, is, this was important. But as I mentioned, we want to authorize our managed identity to this backend API. And we want to we also want to do some authentication on it. And I like to do role-based authentication uh, because it's well uh, the, the recommended way. You can also work with security groups, of course, or whatever you want, but role-based is pretty easy from a developer perspective. So what you need to do is uh, adding app roles to your uh, to your application. So in the in the manifest blade, you can create new app roles if you want. So uh, I, I've got one highlighted over here. Uh, this is a reader role, uh, uh, which can be granted to users or to applications um, in order to read data later on. Uh, obviously, I have to specify this this role to uh, to endpoints later on, but at least uh, but, the, but first you have to specify them in your manifest. So the properties over here allow member types, application, and user. Uh, if you also if you only want to use managed identities, application will be enough. 
but as I mentioned, I like to connect to the services myself also, uh, as, as myself for local development. So I've specified the user over here in order for me to connect to the backend API. Uh, the description, well, obviously this is the description. Display name, uh, this, is the, this is the name, the display name, which will be shown uh, in the users and groups uh, tab, which I'll show you later on. So uh, make something descriptive. Uh, the identifier, so this has to be unique for your application. Uh, but you don't have to specify a GUID over here. You can also do a string or an integer or whatever you think is appropriate, but why not use a GUID because it's always unique. And so uh, use GUIDs. Uh, it's enabled and the value, this is the value which you need to uh, add in your endpoints at your endpoints in order to do the authorization authentication. So there is that. I've got a reader and a, and a writer endpoint. So nothing fancy. Uh, all of this is in my slide deck also. So you can copy paste it from over there if you want to. So that's, that's all for the app registration for now. Uh, but now that we have this app registration, we also need to do uh, some other stuff. So let me first go back to the slide deck in order to make sure I haven't forgotten something. Uh, so as I mentioned, uh, we have this app ID URI. This is the GitHub issue 6172, which, which has the well the details on which client ID to, to add to your uh, solution, to add to the authorized client applications. Then we have the manifest. As I mentioned, uh, you want to specify all the roles you want or need uh, over here. And then, well, next step is connecting the, the, uh, the application, the, the backend API to this app registration. To do so, um, you have to specify the, the identifiers of this app registration inside the configuration uh, of your application. Uh, I'll show you in a, in a sec how this looks like in Visual Studio, but here are the, the code blocks you need. So, uh, you need the well the identifiers like I mentioned. Uh, they will probably differ per environment, so it's it's good to have them configurable. Uh, use authentication, use authorization. One thing to note over here is it matters in which order you set them in your startup. If you switch them around, so first use authorization, then authentication nothing will work. Ask me how I know. So it, I've, I've spent, well, I don't know how long, I think an hour, maybe two, figuring out why my authentication didn't work. Uh, and uh, the errors, uh, the exceptions I got weren't very, uh, very useful. So in the end, I found a Stack Overflow post stating, yeah, you have to specify them in this order in order to get this to work. After I did it, Authentication worked. Cool, right? Well, I, I didn't think so at the moment. So, and next next thing you need to do in the configure services is specifying you want to use the job bearer token authentication scheme, and well, specify uh, the the parameters for this. So let me show you how this looks like in Visual Studio. So first. Let me show you how this solution looks like. So I've got this secure API, uh, which is the, let's say the, the, the backend for frontend API, which users or my spa will connect to. And I have these other two services, conferences and speaker. So we're, we'll be focusing on speaker today, uh, which is the, well, secured uh, service. So this service um, will uh, get the app registration connection to it. And the secure API will make an authenticated request to this service. So just like in, in the slide deck, uh, I've, I've got the authentication uh, uh, properties over here. Um, it's probably a good idea 
not to push the actual values to GitHub. They're not very secret values. <coughs> Still, they're unique to your own app registration and your own tenant. So it doesn't make sense to share them uh, over the internet uh, uh, if you're in, working in company in a closed repository. Well, you can uh, just push them because everyone will use the same values. Other thing we have in the startup, well, use authentication, use authorization, of course, and the add authorization. Nothing fancy over here, but this makes sure everything is, co is configured correctly and you can use the roles over here. Uh, where am I? Yeah, uh, over here, the authorized authorized attribute with the role we just specified in the manifest. So this is something where the operations people and the developers have to work with each other. Uh, the developers come up with the roles they need or they want along with the business users, obviously, and operations people or the people who have access to the Active Directory will have to add them to the manifest. There isn't a user in nice user interface for this yet. I hope it'll come, but until then, we have to specify them in the JSON file. So this is just the, the regular next next finish uh, XP.NET Core web APIs. So uh, all, all of these are still, still have the weather forecast controller inside. You can also view this source on my GitHub uh, I'll, I'll uh, show you the link uh, afterwards, but uh, on my GitHub, all of this code is inside the repository and it's still being worked on for other purposes, but uh, that way you can get an idea of how this works, clone it and try it out yourself. So there's an author authorized attribute and this should work. So what do we have now? It's well, we have uh, the service one, which has a managed identity, and we have the service two, which is configured to uh, the app registration we created in the Active Directory. And we're almost done, but still, both of these services are well uh, uh, are not connected to each other, and when so the managed identity or service one wants to connect to service two. Service one still doesn't has a role to connect to it, and we just added a, a role, an author, authorization role to uh, uh, to the endpoint we want to connect to. So we have to grant the service principal, the managed identity of service one, the appropriate roles in order to read data from service two. This is possible. Uh, there's a PowerShell script for it. Uh, but you can also use the Azure CLI uh, with with the, the REST method. So make a post to the graph API where you specify some identifiers. So this identifier, this 91B, which is in here two times, uh, is the identifier of the enterprise application of your app registration, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, you have to specify which role you want to assign to uh, to your identity, the principal ID, which is the identifier of your managed identity, specifying it's a service principal because that's what a managed identity is, and like I mentioned, the enterprise application identifier, um, which I'll show you in the portal. So we have this enterprise application over here. Um, let me just turn on the masks. Oh. I have to refresh the page to turn on the masks, uh, turn on the identifiers again. So this is the object ID, the 91B, uh, just like we, we saw in the slide deck. Uh, and that's because uh, this enterprise application is the instance of the app registration we configured before. So it's, uh, it's something you get for free. Uh, when creating an app registration, there will also be an enterprise application tied to it. 
also over here you will be able to see which users or which service principles have been added to uh, or which roles have been added to these users so as you can see me and my service principal have the speaker service reader so this is the display name we configured in the manifest i'll show you how this looks like in vs code it's well the same as in the slide so i have to specify all of the stuff and if i want to specify so this was the managed identity if i want to specify the same for my user i'm doing the same thing i have to look up the the principal id of my user in the, in the active directory i'm a user uh, well the rest is pretty much the same and then you will get the appropriate roles to connect to it I got a question uh, 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 from from a co-worker uh, some, some time ago and he asked me hey Jan this is all fun and games uh, but which Azure Active Directory uh, plan do I need for this because it sounds like uh, great stuff to use well you can I'm using this on my free plan so uh, I have uh, my, my MSDN subscription has an AD uh, free uh, instance uh, and this works with the free just if you want to use security groups and add roles to security groups we have to have a premium plan for AD uh, this isn't a bad thing per se because all serious companies sh should have a premium plan of AD either P1 or P2 uh, so it's it's not a big limitation for actual usage but if you're using it in your free uh, free tier, uh, well, you have to specify each and every individual user by yourself and grant roles to them. It's something to, to, to which you should know. You, it's something which you should know, or at least uh, will will discover quite uh, quite fast when trying to grant roles to security groups. So I can also show you <coughs> how this works. So uh, this is uh, an endpoint I have created. So like I shown you earlier, uh, I have this uh, this resource group which has all of the services inside it. So the the backend for front end and the the speakers API are connected, and I have the the weather forecast controller which is, well, let me zoom in a bit, which is over here. And I'm printing some, some object with the access token, which got created from a managed identity. The response from, well, the, the speaker API, states code and the stuff like this. So how does this look like Pizza Studio? Well, pretty much like you expect. So I've got this endpoint over here and I've got the weather forecast controller over here and like I've shown you before uh, I'm retrieving an access token making an HTTP client with the authorized uh, header attribute uh, I'm adding it to my request and retrieving data from my backend API Should, do I dare do I dare running this so show you for show you this actually works i haven't prepped this doing an f5 so it, it's in the master so it should work uh, i've got a healthy endpoint oh, yeah. i was busy doing some health checks so api weather forecast so i should hit my breakpoint now yes i've hit my breakpoint and there's the access token so let me just open it up. Go to jot.il. Paste. And as you can see, here is the X token for me. And I'm in, in a couple of groups. And I have the reader role assigned to myself. So there's that. 
And now I will be able to make an authorized request. And in the body, you see there's the, the, the response I got from, um, from the, the speaker API in the back end. So now I have this, uh, well, a pretty much secure backend uh, API. So this, this secure API still is open to the wild, but my backend services are now protected from, uh, well, an authenticated uh, request. There's something I should note and I forgot to tell yesterday. Uh, and if you're an AAD expert, you probably know this. Uh, I'm not an AAD expert. And there's, um, I have to, to look it up. Um, is it in permissions? There's a toggle you need to set or you want to set. Yes, this one, the user assignment required, which states, or this is the, this is my main identity. Let's go to the enterprise application. So there's this one, user assignment required, which you want to turn to a yes, or at least in my case, I want it uh, to be yes, because I only want authenticated or at least having requests hit my backend which have some kind of a authentication token. So it's also in the in the help, uh, the, the tooltip. So if set to yes, users must be uh, assigned to this application. So a user or a main identity has to be assigned to this application. So the user has to be in the in the uh, uh, in the users and groups uh, blade, which we sh saw before. So this is great in order to well, protect your service even more because if some other managed identity now tries to connect to my service and it has a valid uh, JOT token and, and stuff like this, it could hit my application, but setting this toggle to yes, to true, uh, it won't even hit my application. So AD will cover all of this for me. So it's, a, it's a, a great thing uh, to, to set it through if you want and if you need it. <coughs> so that's, uh, that's it for the, whoa, mouse. So that's it for the, uh, having managed identities and connecting them to backend APIs. I highly recommend doing this uh, because it makes your backend more secure and more uh, safe. So even if you have VNets and Fusion networks and stuff like this, um, add another layer of protection to it uh, because if some hacker, uh, well, this is, uh, has found a breach in your VNet, you you're still protected with these uh, with this this uh, level of authentic uh, yeah this authentication. So please add it. It's it's rather easy if you've done this at least one time, it will be rather easy uh, next time you do it. And with all of the information I've shown you today, you will probably be able to do this uh, yourself also. So as I mentioned, there's also the uh, GitHub repository with uh, secure APIs where I'm, uh, well, where I'm doing all of the stuff, also some deployment pipeline and, and build uh, a pipeline over here. So the ARM templates and the, the build pipeline using Azure DevOps uh, and of course the sources. Documentation is still in the making as always. So watch this, clone it, whatever you want. And uh, if you have any questions afterwards, uh, feel free to uh, connect to me on, on Twitter, on Twitch, uh, ask a question uh, on, my, on my blog or send me an email. Uh, I'm happy to help out and most of the time are able to respond quite quickly. So if there are any questions, I still have my chat room open. And if not, I will uh, call it a day and start working again. It's rather quiet or at least in this chat window. So uh, I'll assume everything was clear. And uh, I wish you a great global Azure.
day. And also don't forget there's also sessions tomorrow. I won't be streaming tomorrow, but some other great people are, so be sure to visit their sessions also. Also later today, uh, there will also be some great sessions. Look at the schedule and uh, stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you all.